welcome back. It's Marlene Francois Madden, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I am a licensed clinical social worker, and I'm also a PhD student. So I'm bringing you this video back because a lot of people have been asking me about my PhD journey. So I'm here to tell you all about it and just starting a doctoral program in the middle of a pandemic. Yes, a pandemic. So um, most of you probably don't know, but about, I would say in 2019, I decided I want to go back to school to pursue my doctoral degree. And I didn't realize that we were going to be in a pandemic because I really love being in the classroom setting and talking to my professors and other students that are in the class. So I applied to PhD programs. And then in January 2020, I got my acceptance letter and I was so excited. And so I'm currently now in a PhD program in Family Sciences and Human Development. And it's similar to the work that I've been doing in social work. I really love it because my professors have a variety of background. They have their doctoral degree in social work, psychology, family sciences, and human development. So the program is very multidisciplinary, which I really love. And so when I started the program, I started it in the middle of a pandemic, like I said, right? So this program started in fall 2020. And when I started, I had to do everything online. I didn't know what that was going to be like for me, being online all day, taking classes, reading materials, writing things. And I was just really happy because the program has been very supportive. My cohort, they have been super supportive. It's about only about five of us in the cohort, but we have really stuck it out. And so I'm going to share some tips as far as like how I made it through. And hopefully I can make it through the next few semesters and, and graduate out of the program. One of the things I had to do was get organized. I had to get organized with my schedule because I am also a therapist. I run a private practice. I'm, I have my book. I have multiple things that I'm doing and I'm also working in a research lab. And so I had to realize, okay, I need to make sure my, my commitments are done well and I have some discipline. So the first thing I did was I had a planner. I had a planner and I wrote down every single day, everything I need to get done down to what chapters I was reading in my books down to any um, appointments that I had that I need to keep. So I was very structured with my appointment book. The other thing I made sure to do was include self-care. Oftentimes when people are in a doctoral program, you hear that they're not managing their self-care well, they're burnt out, they're overworked. And I didn't wanna be that way going into a program, especially when we're dealing with a global pandemic and also racism in America and going through new political administration. So I'm like, I don't want to burn myself out my first year going in here. So I made sure that every day I took a nap. I made sure I was eating two to three meals a day. I had my snacks in. I had my water, some sunlight. I made sure to talk to my friends to have that supportive community because it's very important. I find that so many people get so wrapped up into their program and they really don't take a break to just hang out with their family or friends. And I didn't want to be one of those people where it took over my life. The other thing I made sure to have was mentors. I made sure to have mentors outside of my program. And the good thing about having mentors and colleagues outside of your program is that you have this bigger supportive network. And the reason why that was also important to me because of the research that I wanna do. Now, I went into this program because I've been, in the, I've been a therapist for the last 15 years working, and better yet I should say, I've been working in a mental health space for the last 15 years. And I've been working with adolescent girls and I noticed the disparities that black girls face and for me, that was part of the reason why I said I need to go back to school because I want to mix my practice world with research and policy and merge them all together. So the macro, micro, and meso social work, mix them all together and create the world that I want to create for our black girls. And so that was part of the reason why I went back to school. And when I went back, I realized that it was important for me to have mentors and advisors who were also in this work. So I connected with a lot of people on Black Twitter, of course, and there are a lot of people there. If you go under academic Twitter hashtag, the PhD chat hashtag, you'll see a lot of other students and colleagues that are also doing similar work. So I looked up that hashtag. I looked up the Black Girlhood hashtag, Scholar Alert hashtag, and I met with so many people on Twitter. And from there, I was able to build a community of other like-minded women that were also pursuing similar researches research um, that I also had interest in. And the good thing about that is that they're able to send me papers and they say, hey, check out this new, new article that just came out. Check out this fellowship that you may want to apply to. Check out this conference that's coming up. Do you need to submit a proposal? Do you need any help with that? I can show you some ropes on what you need to do. 
And so that really helped me a lot to build a supportive community with other people that had similar interests that I did. Um, the next thing I will say that I had to do was make sure that I know that imposter syndrome is going to creep up. Being a therapist for so long and working and running your own business and having to leave that to go and become a full-time student is a big challenge because I was building my personal brand and in the midst of that now it's like I have to take a pause on all the things I want to do like speaking and podcasts and other cool projects I had to kind of slow down on that to really focus on this program and the thing about it is that imposter syndrome started to creep in because now you're looking at other people all the accolades that they're receiving all the good work that they're doing you find out that they receive these fundings you know competitive grants and they've been published or doing all this work and here I am as a first year student I'm feeling like I have to do everything I had created an Excel spreadsheet of everything I wanted to do my first year and it was a lot of things I had put on there I didn't complete all of it and I'm giving myself some grace but I noticed that I wanted to do so much and I was really hard on myself even with my classes because my first semester I was taking quantitative methods a statistics course and I was also taking a grant writing and program programming course and I recognized that when I was taking those courses I was really hard on myself with my assignments that were due and at the end of it I was able to get all A's at the end of the semester but I really spent a lot of time where I felt like okay well can I get this done will I pass because we know when you're in grad school your grades have to be above a B like you can't get a C in these programs and so it was really hard on myself and I'm realizing okay now that I'm going into my second semester spring semester I'm not going to be as hard as on myself about it I'm going to really you know be in this place where I can still exist and and own up the work that I do and know that I, I belong here and that I can do good work so you know those are just some of the tips that I want to share um, a little bit about what else I'm doing while I'm in this program. Outside of just being a doctoral student, I'm also in a research lab. In my research lab that I'm in, we focus on working with adolescents around um, youth, prevent youth prevention work around substance use and mental health. And so a lot of the work that I get to do is really cool because I get to do webinar series with, um, with teenagers, which is something I love doing. Uh, we'll be doing assessments. There's a bunch of other stuff that I'll be doing, but in the midst of that too, that's where imposter syndrome also creeped in, feeling like, am I doing enough in my research lab? But I had to recognize we're in a pandemic. I can't go into the school setting because the kids are home. There's certain things that I could not do that probably would have worked better if we were not in this situation, but I'm learning to give myself some grace and just to keep learning and just being a sponge in this program. But I'm really excited to just be in this space and I'm hoping that as I'm, I'm, as I'm transitioning into this, you know, spring semester that I can keep reading more, um, but also owning the fact that I belong here and I have good work that I can do. So I'm hoping by the end of this program, I can, you know, do great work when it comes to black girls and creating more equitable spaces for them, especially when it comes to mental health. So, you know, hopefully I'll share more, more about my PhD journey, you know, because this is not cookie cutter, it's not easy. What I will say is have people around you that are very supportive, that's gonna rock with you and hold you down because this program, when you go into a program, it's not an easy thing. So you gotta be all in, know that you really wanna do this. So I hope that you guys will tune in for more videos. And if you like my shirt, you can get this on STEM Noir, their Instagram page is STEM, S-T-E-M-N-O-I-R-E. You can go on their Instagram page and order this shirt too. I really love it. You know, this is something that we've been talking about the P-value in our quantitative and stats class. So I really love this shirt. But um, I hope you guys will stick around for more videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and share this video with other people. And my social media hashtags will be in the comments. So thank you guys.